Today's show is sponsored by Indie Film Hustle's Filmmaker Process. We provide filmmakers with professional services to get their films or series funded, finished, and distributed. For more information, go to filmmakerprocess.com. Now, you also brought up Tintin a bunch. I mean, how how was it to work with not only Steven Spielberg, but also Peter Jackson? And what is that process of uh, working in that machine? Like you were saying, that's a the completely animated film. So that's a completely different way of working um, than your normal, just traditional um, live action. So what was, two questions, what was it like working with Steven and Peter and being inside of that machine? Well, I wouldn't have, the first thing to say is I would not have been there without Edgar. Mm -hmm. So Steven Spielberg called up Edgar to see whether he was interested in rewriting Stephen Moffat's draft because Stephen Moffat was leaving to become the showrunner on Doctor Who. And Edgar knew I knew Tintin, so he called me up, said, did I want to do it with him? I said, yes, I do want yes. to co-write yes. Stephen Spielberg's <laughs> Tintin with you, Edgar, please. Yes, I do. Thank you, Edgar. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so, so I was just kind of... Um, incredibly sort of excited and honored to be there. Also a little bit scared, clinging on to Edgar's coattails in terms of right. having the creative authority to be there. Um, and, and it was, it was, uh, uh, you know, a massive, massively educational and they were extremely gracious really to invite me as Edgar's friend into right into the middle of that process and it was fascinating you know i was on conference calls between the head of the studio and uh peter jackson and stephen sometimes i'm not sure they knew i was on the call <laughs> but it was just amazing to listen to how the business operates at that level um interesting and and, and what's impressive is how courteous and respectful and um how there's not a sense of you know even though these are, you know, incredibly uh, successful, you know, like gods to you and me, they behave like um, with mortals. A level, yeah, with a level of humility and respect for the process and the money and the um, and then and then with amazing skill, you know. Um, uh, yeah, I, there's no short answer to that. You know, there were there were amazing experiences every day, like like James Cameron walking on and trying out the the motion capture technology. Um, this, you know, is, this is after, this is pre, pre-Avatar or post-Avatar? Well, that's a good question. What year was Avatar? I think that was 09. Yeah, so it, so might, it, have been, at, it might have been concurrent. Okay, it was 09, I think, was when it got released, but he'd been working on it for a bit. I think it's 09, yeah. because it was around the time when I moved to LA, so it was like 09 or 10, around that area. Well, Lots of directors, lots of famous directors came in to look at the technology um, mm -hmm. and to see Stephen operating with it. And, you know, and, and he says in interviews how it kind of made him feel like a kid again, because you could go. You can you could kind of operate in a way maybe you wouldn't he wouldn't operate in a live action movie by holding the the thing. I forget what it was called. But like <laughs> the, <laughs> um, yeah, so. So it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was, uh, I just hesitate to use cliched hyperbolic words like incredible and amazing, but it kind of was an yeah. everyday different respect. Um, and in, on all sorts of levels, like the seeing stars and meeting famous people getting to actually hand in script pages to Spielberg and him either liking it or not liking it. Um, to watch the rest of this interview, head over to bulletproofscreenwriting.tv.